If you're a student or parent of a student taking the grade 6 achievement test GSAT this week, take a deep breath and settle down. To watch today's edition of Jamaica Magazine, we have some useful advice to help you through the process. So don't worry, we've got you. I'm Adrian Atkinson. In the program today, some vital GSET information from the Ministry of Education. And for those students working hard to secure a government scholarship, learn about the available options. We also have some information on an important vitamin that could give you the boost you need this week. Stick around as the package unfolds with this important message followed by the news. Are you registered to vote? If not, don't miss your chance of getting on the next voters list. The deadline for registration is Tuesday, March 31. Persons not registered by March 31 will not be on the May voters list and cannot be added before November 2015. To get registered, simply visit the EOJ constituency office nearest you. For more information, call us at 922-0425 or visit ecj.com.jm. Remember, voting is your right. Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith, and this is your GIS News for Tuesday, March 24. There's been a 6% growth in Jamaica's tourism sector for the quarter ending December 31, 2014. Prime Minister Portia Simpson Miller made the announcement as she opened the Hyatt Ziva and the Hyatt Zilara hotels at Rose Hall St. James on the weekend. Provisional gross foreign exchange earnings from tourism between January and December 2014 was in excess of 2.2 billion US dollars. The sector for the quarter ending December 30, 1, 2014, grew at a rate of approximately 6%. And this was achieved even while a number of rooms were out of service. The Prime Minister also reiterated government's promise to meet growth projections and build the economy while improving the quality of lives for all Jamaicans. As we move to achieve this goal, we have kept sharp focus on creating a more vibrant economic environment in our country for businesses, whether small, medium or large, local or foreign. Our goal is to facilitate win-win investments that will bring you a good rate of return and also create the jobs we desire for our people. In the meantime, Tourism Minister Dr. Wickham McNeil welcomed the dual-branded 620-room all-inclusive resorts, saying the 85 million US dollar investment was a show of confidence in Jamaica. This new investment by a world-renowned hotel chain adds both distinction and diversity to the island's tourism program. It also sends the important message that Hyatt sees a strong future in Grand Jamaica. The Hyatt Ziva and Zilara hotels, operated by Playa Hotels and Resorts, have so far employed a thousand people. Youth and Culture Minister Lisa Hanna is urging users of the Halfway Tree Transport Center to look out for children with special needs who use the center. At a Pondicana reasoning session at the Transportation Center Friday, Ms. Hannah said she had received reports that disabled children were being abused at the bus terminus. And I'm asking you, if you see someone do it, you can also report it to the Office of the Children's Registry or the CDA. But I'm asking you first and foremost to love all children. And rather than do something to bully children with special needs or disabilities, try and help them. Can you do that? So if you see someone take their money, report it to one of the officers here. If you see someone spit on them, speak out about it. The National Irrigation Commission is having a major problem with vandals who destroy its systems and others who steal the water. Recently we came across the matter, I think it was on YouTube where told of canal splash in our own Spanish town where <laughs> uh, communities block the canal and they have uh, parties and they promote it. It's illegal and it, it really diminished the quality of the service and we, we, we are working with the communities and 
you know, the leadership to stem that. Speaking at a recent JIS think tank, NIC Director of Engineering Milton Henry said the commission had suffered almost $3 million in damage, affecting 12 of its consumer meters. Another four of its locations have been vandalized. And we, we really want to use this medium, and we hope you will take it to appeal to the, those the perpetrators to, you know, uh, see what they're doing and desist because our Irrigation Act, and we've been applying it, does allow us to prosecute. And um, they, they, if found guilty, the maximum fine of $100,000 and our three years in in prison. The NIC now has eight cases of water theft in St. Elizabeth before the courts. 46 residents of Douglas Castle in St. Anne are now wired to the national grid thanks to a $4 million project by the Rural Electrification Program, REP. At last Wednesday's lighting ceremony, Energy Minister Philip Polwell said he was pleased that 97.5% of the island now had electricity. He also repeated government's plans to supply the remaining 2.5% of the population with renewable energy solutions. There are some communities that are too far away from the grid, more than three kilometers. If uh, they are so far away, it doesn't make sense for us to extend the grid, but we can put up single units to generate electricity using the sun, using the wind, using hydropower. And that is how we're going to conquer the rest of the country. And finally, Jamaicans are being urged to work together to detect, treat and prevent tuberculosis as the country observes World Tuberculosis Day. Health Minister Dr. Fenton Ferguson says government intends to follow this year's theme to reach, treat and cure every one of the disease. Tuberculosis is a highly contagious airborne disease affecting young adults in their most productive years. Dr. Ferguson also urged persons who may have symptoms, including a chronic cough lasting for three weeks, night sweats, fever and chills, and sweating during sleep, to visit their doctor and get tested. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. Thank you for watching. Parents, make sure the children get immunized. Hear this! Immunization, it is a must. This is not a joke thing, this you can trust. It is required by law for entry to nursery, to daycare, and to schools. Listen up, it is necessary to prevent diseases, such as the measles, the polamylitis, the lockjaw, and the whooping cough. Immunize your kids, keep them healthy, keep them strong. Prevent deadly diseases such as mumps, rubella, and diphtheria. Immunize your child today. Immunization, a key to good health. A message from the Ministry of Health and PAHO. I advise him to relax, you know, not to pressure themselves too much. And instead of studying too hard, actually take a break, sleep, you know, just be calm. Just remember that you hold your destiny. It does not only depend on the teachers, our parents themselves, but you yourself. You can quiz yourself, make your own exam questions, teach others around you, teach yourself. So that at the end of the day, when it comes on to the exam, you're ready and determined because it's the attitude that you go into the exam room with, it will be reflected on your grades. Basically, just, just study hard and put them to it, you know, and give their best effort, you know, have confidence. They could just keep calm, do their best, and in the end, the hard work will pay off. It doesn't matter when the date is, you'll do well, so... Do what you have to do and let's hope the best is good enough. Study hard, pay attention to, to the revision because no many, many teachers are now going through a revision process. Pay attention, stay focused and I know as children that we sometimes or they sometimes love their video games and their TVs and their different shows but this is the time you have to sacrifice it because you want to achieve what you want to achieve to go further on in life. So my advice to you is just to give it a break, you know, make the sacrifice because it will be worth it in the end.
Members of the public there giving some advice to students who will be sitting the Grade 6 Achievement Test this Thursday and Friday. More than 38,000 Grade 6 students will be putting pencil to paper in this annual test. And the Ministry of Education wants both students and their parents to remain calm. Listen now as the Chief Education Officer gives us some more useful advice. You can get it if you really want. For most students, it's no easy feat to make the transition from primary or preparatory school to the next leg of the journey, which is normally a high or junior high school. To pave the way for that next step, each year thousands of students island-wide are tested in key competences in the exam known to all as GSET. Sweaty palms, anxious bodies and frazzled nerves plague many of these students leading up to the big day. But as you prepare for this year's Grade 6 Achievement Test, youngsters, shed the nerves. Because we've got some tips to help you keep calm and do your best. Try and try. You'll succeed at Take enough pencils to the examination. Listen to the instructions of the examiners and concentrate on completing the papers on time. It is not about what your friends or your classmates are doing. It is about your concentration and what you have recorded on the paper. Some students let their nerves get the best of them, and when it's time for multiple choice papers, they make the mistake of shading in their answers in the wrong line. It's an error that can spell disaster for good results. I also want for this year to encourage our students to ensure that you coordinate well the eye movement from the question paper to the pre-slogged answer sheet. So many times we see where students have actually missed the number for the question. And when that happens, it messes up the entire numbering and answers. And sometimes a student who would have otherwise done exceptionally well would have gotten very low grades. Students are not the only ones who have the GSET jitters. We know parents are sometimes more nervous than the youngsters. You can get it if you really want, but you must try. Parents are being reminded of the following. Remain calm. Support rather than pressure your children at this time. Ensure that the GSAT candidates are well rested before the examination. Make plans for your children's uh, nutritious meals, not only over the two days, but at least they should have been on a program by now. Importantly, they should at least have a proper breakfast before they are taken or sent to the examinations. Leave the examination centers as soon as your children have settled down to the, do the examinations. There is no point remaining there because that also creates some kind of nervousness for the children. Students, you have worked hard, been adequately prepared by your teachers and parents. So take a deep breath, settle down, and do your best. And our final reminder to you, be confident in yourselves. You have done your preparation, and with preparation, you will be able to do well on your examinations. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want. You can get it if you really want, but you must try. Hi. I'm Shauna Helps, Women's Girls School National Junior Sprinter. By now, you should know about the Tablets in School pilot project in which students and teachers in 38 schools across Jamaica are provided with tablet computers by the government. This message is for those students who will benefit. Remember that the main purpose of the tablets is for improving education. Be conscious of your environment. Don't show off by using it on the road, while walking, or on the bus. Wait until you're at home or in a safe place. 
and do not use it when you are eating or drinking. Food and liquid on your device will ruin your chance of enjoying the most from it. Students, if you take care of your tablet, it will take care of you. So you've been working hard and you expect excellent scores when the GSAT results are released later this year. If you're aiming for a scholarship, take a look at what's available and how awardees are decided. Government, through its various ministries and agencies, awards a number of scholarships to students each year. You too could qualify and benefit from a scholarship or grant, but you must seek in order to find. At the primary level and moving on to high school, students who do GSAT each year and earn high scores can get scholarships from the Ministry of Education. The scholarships are awarded to students from both public and private institutions. The government in itself, the Ministry of Education, offers a total of 32 scholarships, government scholarships, yearly to students who sit GSAT examination. Of the 32, four are named after prominent Jamaicans, former government minister J.A.G. Smith and three of the national heroes, Marcus Garvey, Paul Bogle, and George William Gordon. To qualify for these, students must meet some personalized criteria, generally related to the person in whose honor the scholarship is named. For example, the Paul Bogle Scholarship, it is offered to um, a boy or a girl who must be attending Morant Bay High School. So if a child is um, selected, to attend Moran Bay High School, then that child qualifies to be among those who would be selected. But the bottom line is that it would be based on performance. Basically, the 28 scholarships are awarded based on performance, purely. And it is um, awarded to all school types. So private, which we refer to the prep schools, um, all eight schools, primary and junior high, primary school students. Since these students are selected based entirely on scores, the process is rather easy. In addition to these, the Education Ministry also offers sponsored scholarships, extended through private sector institutions such as banks to top performing students. High schoolers, you might have just completed fifth or sixth form and are ready to experience the college life. In case you didn't know, the Student Loan Bureau actually offers grants. Yes, under its specially designed Grant in Aid GIA program, students receive a specified non-repayable sum to assist with the funding of school-related expenses. It's not a full scholarship, but it can certainly help to make a difference. Check out the Bureau's website to see if you qualify or call them at 754-2559. Then there is JAMVAT. The Jamaica Values and Attitudes program is another viable option from the Ministry of Education. Students volunteer for 200 hours and in turn earn a payoff of 30% of their tuition fees as well as an additional stipend. A great reason to volunteer indeed. Those of you already in university, the Ministry of Education's tertiary level unit is a great place to start your search. You can stop by their offices, make a call, or simply log on to their website, click on scholarships, and a long list of opportunities opens. The Ministry of Finance and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs also have a number of scholarship programs in place, especially if you're looking for opportunities to study abroad. Think Cuba, Russia, Japan, and so many other foreign countries. These scholarships offer not just educational advancement, but to a greater extent, a cultural exchange and broadening of your global network. If you need help in your search for scholarships, another government agency, the National Center for Youth Development, which falls under the Ministry of Youth and Culture, 
also displays scholarship options for students on its website. For further tips, call and or check out the websites of the Ministries of Education, Finance and Foreign Affairs. Hope you found the information quite useful. Students go online, check out the websites, call the numbers, be proactive and make the necessary steps in making your educational dreams a reality. They were heading home, playing in the streets just like they always did. When... I'll see you again. My name is Sheldon Bell. I barely survived. My friend, she didn't. I'm now much more careful on the road. You should be too. 330 Jamaicans died in road crashes in 2014. 99 of the deceased were pedestrians. Road users, obey road rules. Walk, drive, and ride with care. Remember, road safety begins with you. We flipped the script to matters of health. As you heard earlier from the Chief Education Officer, Dr. Grace McLean, proper nutrition is vital for students to perform their best in exams. It's also critical to their overall well-being. A big component in proper nutrition is vitamins found in fruits, vegetables, and a wide range of supplements. In today's HealthWise, we look at vitamin C. If you're like most kids, you've probably heard at least one parent say, don't forget to take your vitamins, eat your fruits and salads, they're packed with vitamins, and you heed the advice. But do you know why? Do you know what exactly vitamins are? Vitamins are substances that are found in foods we eat. Our body needs them to work properly. Each vitamin has a special role to play. For example, vitamin D in milk helps us develop strong bones and teeth. Vitamin A in carrots helps us to see at night. Vitamin C in oranges helps our bodies to heal from a cut. And B vitamins in leafy green vegetables help our bodies make protein and energy. There are two categories of vitamins, fat-soluble and water-soluble. Fat-soluble vitamins are the ones called A, D, E, and K. When we eat foods that contain fat-soluble vitamins, the essential nutrients are stored in the fatty tissues of our bodies and our livers until our bodies need them. The water-soluble vitamins are C and B complex. These cannot be stored in our bodies and will dissolve in water before our bodies can absorb them. Any vitamin C or B that our bodies do not use pass through our systems mostly when we urinate. So they need to be replaced regularly to ensure a fresh supply every day. But let's break it down and take a look at one of these vitamins, C. Vitamin C is often referred to as the cold fighting vitamin. It is also known as a wonder worker because it plays an important role in building and maintaining our tissues. Doctors say it can enhance the function of the immune system and plays a role in the formation of important enzymes in the body. Vitamin C is important because it protects the body from skin diseases, respiratory infections, and cardiovascular problems. According to nutritionists, human beings cannot produce their own supply of vitamin C, so we have to obtain it through our diet. Vitamin C is found in citrus and other fruits such as oranges, limes, lemons, tangerines, grapefruit, papaya, strawberries, melons, and cantaloupes. It can also be found in vegetables like tomatoes, broccoli, green and red bell peppers, potatoes, peas, raw lettuce, and cabbage. Vitamin C can be lost easily during cooking, particularly frying, so it's recommended that people steam their vegetables to minimize loss. Vitamin C is also good for preserving the body from aches, pains, and heart disease. If we do not have enough vitamin C in our systems, it could lead to health complications. Diseases or ailments may include gum bleeding, skin discoloration, lack of energy, tooth decay, poor wound healing, 
easy bruising, loss of appetite, and pain in the joints. According to medical experts, there are certain groups of persons who can easily use up ascorbic acid, that is, vitamin C found in citrus and green vegetables, more rapidly than others. These are alcohol consumers, smokers, diabetics, individuals under stressful conditions or fever, and the elderly. It is important to remember that vitamin C is also a highly effective antioxidant. For additional information on vitamin C, consult your doctor or nutritionist. You can also get valuable tips from any government health institution close to you. So be health wise. That's our show for today. Tune in again tomorrow, same time on the station for another comprehensive and insightful edition. We wish all the GSAT students all the best as you do your final days of preparation. Take the advice given earlier in the show and just keep calm because everything will be all right. Have comments or feedback, send us an email to makeamagazine at gis.gov.jm. Please visit our website, gis.gov.jm, for all the latest national news and information. And stay connected with us on social media. On behalf of the entire production team here at the GIS, I'm Adrian Atkinson. Till next time, do take care. This has been a production of the Jamaica Information Service, the voice of Jamaica.